Hey, this is David Osteen, pastor of Hope Bible Church in Locust Grove, Georgia. And just in case you're wondering where in the world Locust Grove is, we're about 30 miles south of Atlanta, and it's a small town, and uh, I'm not sure why they call it Locust Grove. I've never really noticed locusts or groves or groves of locusts, but that's just the name of the town. So anyway, maybe you don't care, but I thought I'd just mention where we're at. Uh I want to deal with a question here about 2 Corinthians 3 in verse number 6. Why did Paul say that he was an able minister of the New Testament? 2 Corinthians 3, and let's, uh, let's pick it up in verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency of, is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Well, <clears throat> I believe there is a distinction between a testament and a covenant. Uh, most commentaries and, and Bible teachers will say they're completely the same, they're interchangeable. Certainly they're related, but there's a distinction, and understanding that distinction will help you immensely with 2 Corinthians 3, 6. We know the body of Christ is not under the new covenant. I have a message here on YouTube in which I deal with that. When you study what the new covenant is uh, and all that goes into that, we're not experiencing a lot of those things. And furthermore, it's plainly stated that God makes the new covenant with the house of Israel. Uh, Jeremiah 31, Hebrews 8. And so uh, that's very clear. Uh, and God makes the new covenant with the same people he made the old covenant with. And uh, we're not his covenant people. We have a standing in grace. And uh, the body of Christ is not the covenant people of God. That would be the earthly people, the nation Israel. So since we're not under the new covenant, why did Paul say he was an able minister of the New Testament? Well, a testament is not the same thing as a covenant. Um, they're, like I said, they're related, but you can't have a testament without death and blood. That's based on Hebrews 9, beginning in verse 15. For, and for this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might, have, uh, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool, hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. And it's not my point. I don't have the time, of course, on this video to expound in there. But just to point out that a testament, uh, you can't have it without death and blood. However, a covenant, uh, you don't, a covenant is simply an agreement between two parties, there has to be at least two parties to have a covenant. There, there doesn't have to be two parties to have a testament. Um, a, a testament is simply God testifying of what he will do. It's not an agreement. It's his, it, in fact, in Revelation 11, verse 19, it's called his testament. But in a covenant, there's two parties at least, and it, it does not require death and blood to be in effect. Uh, you can study the Bible and see. You, you can have a covenant without death and blood, but you can't have a testament without death and blood. That tells me they're different. So both the Old and New Covenants are ratified by the blood of the Old and New Testaments. So they're related, but yet they're distinct. And so the body of Christ is saved by the blood of the New Testament, but we're not under the New Covenant. And so this distinction explains how we can receive um, benefits from that blood of the New Testament without being under the New Covenant. So Paul mentions New Testament a couple times, and that, that, that does not need to throw us for a loop. The Bible's clear. We're not under the New Covenant. But 
uh, Christ, when he shed his blood on the cross, the same blood that he shed for our sins, uh, he shed for Israel's sins. It's the same blood. It's the blood of the New Testament. So I don't have a problem with saying New Testament. I, I know that, you know, when you're reading about the Old Testament, the New Testament, you're generally, you know, obviously speaking of Israel. However, um, Paul made it clear through the revelations given to him uh, that when Christ died on the cross, he not only died to save his nation, uh, Israel, but he died for the sins of the whole world. And it's the same blood. It's the blood of the New Testament. And so there's a distinction. And I think that'll immensely help you in understanding 2 Corinthians 3 and, uh, and so forth. So anyway, I think it's important to study that out. Uh, I encourage you to do that. Uh, look at these things, search the scriptures, see whether it's so, and consider the possibility that there is a difference between a covenant and a testament. So I hope that helps. And if you have a question, please email me, hopebiblechurchga at att.net, or leave a comment here on YouTube, and we'll try to get to your question. Thank you for watching.